welcome to the final episode on the Beatitudes. Join me to explore and learn more about how we can be a better follower of Christ. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week. Ida, thank you for reminding us that peace begins with me. Athena shared that to be a peacemaker is not to fight, but to love one another. We are always inspired by your sharings and beautiful artwork. Do keep them coming. Last week, we learned about the seventh beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Jesus tells us that if we want to live as happy children of God, then we must make peace. Jesus is our peace, and we want to bring his peace to others. I hope you manage to spend time with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and receive Jesus' peace. This week, we are going to learn about what being persecuted means. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, Jesus says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Before we find out what this means, let's first begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, who shows us how to live in love. Holy Spirit, guide us in living out the Beatitudes, so that we can experience the joy of the Kingdom of Heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us sing to Jesus and ask the Holy Spirit to renew our lives, so that we can live as children of God.
kids and welcome back! Are you ready to learn more about the Word of God today? Join us as we find out what it means to be persecuted for the Kingdom of Heaven. John, how do you do it? Do what? How can you still be so cheerful and calm after Jacob made fun of you again for saying grace before snack time? Oh, you mean when he said that I was praying to the air? Jacob doesn't know that I'm thanking God for the food, even though Mum packed me a very healthy snack. You're not angry with him. How do you stay so calm? Ah, it wasn't easy. I was angry at first, but I remember the beatitude. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Huh? Do you have any idea what John is talking about? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, Jesus says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As a follower of Jesus, we have to do the right thing, guided by the Holy Spirit. But sometimes when we do what is right before God, there are others who make fun of us or make it difficult for us to do the right thing. They might say or do hurtful things to you or say unkind things about you to others. They might persecute you. How do you stay calm when you are faced with such a situation? Let's see how Sabine and John live out the Beatitude. Let's go, Sabine! Come here, Mom. I'm just packing my books. John, what do you think the Kingdom of Heaven is like? Well, I think heaven is a place where we can have everlasting joy with God forever. Sounds like a really nice place. Yep, I keep my eyes on heaven and on Jesus and do the right thing. This gives me joy, even when what Jacob said was hurtful. That's why you can stay calm and cheerful. I get it now. I got to go. Bye, Bye John. I was scared Jacob was going to make fun of me too, but from now on, I'll say grace before snack time with you and look forward to heaven. Bye! Bye! I'm sure you would want to be close to Jesus and have the joy of the kingdom of heaven too, right? Let's sing this song to tell Jesus that He is enough for us.
Today, we learned that if we love Jesus and want to experience the joy of heaven, then we must be prepared to face persecutions. Others may say or do unkind things to us when we do the right thing. But as long as we persevere and keep our eyes on Jesus, we will receive the joy of the kingdom of heaven. This week, don't forget to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to stand strong in your faith when others give you a hard time. Let us now listen to the story of a blessed man who stood strong in his faith in the face of challenges. Blessed Nicholas Barry did the right thing even when it was hard. This was a fruit of his daily prayer. Even when he was busy, Nicholas made sure to spend time with Jesus. Others saw Jesus in his words and actions. One day, Nicholas was on his way to help someone when an angry man suddenly appeared. He shouted at Nicholas, hit him and accused Nicholas of things he didn't do. Nicholas knelt down and asked the man for forgiveness. People who saw this thought Nicholas was weak, but he taught them that we needed a strong faith to become when others attack us. The man was so touched, he said sorry to Nicholas the next day. Nicholas forgave him and treated him kindly. He lived in a dark time where poor people were hungry and fearful for their lives. To help them find hope in God, Blessed Nicholas Barry formed a community of women who taught the girls to read. They also took the children to Mass and gave catechism classes to everyone. In 10 years, 200 ladies were inspired to join the community, known as the Infant Jesus Sisters. Today, they are all over the world, teaching children in schools and helping people in need of Jesus. Blessed Nicholas Barry stayed calm and showed great faith when persecuted. He is a role model for all of us to do what is right for the joy of the kingdom of heaven, even when it is difficult. For this week's activities, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps, like and share our page. Do share your works in the comments with us. We can't wait to see them. Don't forget to share with us one thing that you have learned today. Remember that we can have the joy of the kingdom of heaven if we keep our eyes on Jesus and heaven and do what is right. The Beatitudes show us how to live in love. So keep working at it. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget! to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CatholicMarsAtHome. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us about something that we will see at Mass. Our Masses are celebrated by lots of different priests, but they all have one thing in common, their clothes. You wear a uniform to go to school or to play sports, and Father wears a uniform for Mass. These clothes signal that we are about to do something special. Over Father's regular clothes, he puts on an orb. He had long, white garments. Its color reminds him to stay pure so he can serve God at the altar. He ties a rope called a cincture around his waist as a symbol of self-control. Then he drapes a strip of cloth called a stole around his neck, a sign of his priesthood. And finally, over everything, Father puts on a big vestment called the chasuble. It symbolizes Christ's love, covering up our many sins. Both the stole and chasuble match the liturgical color of the day, purple, green, red, or white. Each of these vestments is important, even if we don't see them at Mass. They remind us of the great work that Father is about to do. Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about the vestments of the priest. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent, and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about the Beatitudes. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. 
Let us now worship the Lord together on this thirtieth Sunday in Ordinary Time, twenty fifth October, twenty twenty. We offer up this mass for all children that they may love the Lord with all their hearts, with all their souls, and with all their minds. Join us in singing the processional hymn. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And your friends, dear children at home, how are you? We just heard the hymn, a new commandment, and that new commandment is love. And we've come to this part of the mass at the beginning of the mass. We actually believe that God loves us very much; that He forgives us our sins. And there's sometimes that we have not loved as we should, a little bit selfish, a little bit grumpy, and so it's during those times that we have not listened to God asking us to love our parents, our siblings, our classmates, our grandparents better. Let us confidently ask God's tender mercy and love, yeah, to be with us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters. That I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the sons of Israel this, You must not molest the stranger or oppress him, for you lived as strangers in the land of Egypt. You must not be harsh with the widow or with the orphan, if you are harsh with them, they will surely cry out to me, and be sure I shall hear their cry. My anger will flare, and I shall kill you with the sword. Your own wives will be widows, your own children orphans. If you lend money to any of my people, to any poor man, among you. you must not play the assurer with him. You must not demand interest from him. If you take another's cloak as a pledge, you must give it back to him before sunset. It is all the covering he has. It is the cloak he wraps his body in. What else would he sleep in? If he cries to me, I will listen, for I am full of pity. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, when we told you the good news, it was with the power and assurance that come from the Holy Spirit, and not simply with words. You knew what kind of people you were and how we helped you. So, when you accepted the message, you followed our example and the example of the Lord. You suffered, but the Holy Spirit made you glad. You became an example for all the Lord's followers in Macedonia and Achaia. And because of you, the Lord's message has spread everywhere in those regions. The Word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together and to disconcert him, one of them put a question. Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear friends at home, dear children, did you hear what was the greatest commandment? Yes? You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And what's the second commandment? You must love your neighbor as yourself. Um... Francis, what are you doing here? I'm your neighbor. Oh, oh, that's right. I must love you as myself, right? Mm-hmm. But why are you disturbing my homily again? This is like the second time. You shouldn't be doing this too often, you know. I want to say hello to the children. Oh, okay. Hello, children. Hi, Francis. Hello. All right, now you say hello, you can go. No. What do you mean, no? This is my homily. Mm-hmm. And you are? I'm a Franciscan. And I am? You are Francis. Mm-hmm. So I'm your founder. Mm-hmm. I'm staying. Oh, okay. But if you're staying, you have to say something. Okay. I got a question to disconcert you. Okay. To disconcert me, to make me unsettled and to make me upset. Okay, what is it? Well, is your love like a birthday cake. Is my love like a birthday cake? Children, do you get that? What does that mean? Is my love like a birthday cake? What kind of question is that, Francis? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is my love like a birthday cake? I don't know what you're really asking. Well, is your love limited? Limited? Oh, I see. So you're referring to birthday cake not as like a rainbow cake or a chocolate cake or a onde onde cake. Lah. What you're asking is, when we have a birthday, we have actually got a cake, right, to share with everyone. And if there are four people, we can cut it into quarters. If we've got eight people, we have to cut it into eight pieces. If we've got 20 people, we have to cut it into 20 pieces, right? Mm-hmm. Which means it's limited, right? Yes. So, is your love limited? Hmm. I've never thought about that. Is my love limited? Well, maybe sometimes yes, sometimes no. That's why I'm asking. And I'm wondering whether you're asking the parents as well. Whether if you have got one child, you love your child completely, and then when you've got four children, you divide your love. But it doesn't really work that way, right? You actually got enough love for every child, right? Right? Mm. I wonder about God. Mm-hmm. Right, I see where you're getting at. So God's love is infinite. No wonder the commandment is telling us to love God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. I get it. 
Because if God loves us totally and loves each of us completely, then we can love God completely with all our heart. We can love ourselves completely. We can love our neighbor completely as well. Am I right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. You're so clever. That's the first time you're saying it. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Right. So, children, do you get that? That we can love the Lord our God with all our heart, completely, total. And I suppose in the second reading, we're supposed to be like God, to be imitators of God. And so if we're supposed to be like God, we're supposed to love like God, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we're supposed to love like God, that means we have to be like Jesus, who loved until he gave up his life. Oh my gosh, on the cross with so much pain and suffering. Hmm, that's what love is. Right. And Jesus also asked us to love our enemies. Can you love your enemies? Not so easy, right? But I suppose sometimes when we love with our own love, we cannot really, really love. But if we imitate God and imitate Jesus, we can love like them, completely and with our life. Isn't that right, Francis? That's right. You are getting it. Hello, children. Do you get it? Hey. Okay, so if we can forgive our enemies, then what about the enemies of today in the gospel? We have the Pharisees who try to disconcert Jesus, right? That means to make Jesus upset. Mm -hmm. They're always doing that. Was Jesus upset? No, he wasn't. In fact, oh my gosh, he wasn't angry at all. What did he do? He actually turned a trick question into a beautiful thing. He decided to teach them what is the greatest commandment, which is to love God and then love neighbor as yourself. Jesus is a genius. Indeed. So, I remember at the priest segment, they talked about Blessed Nicholas Barre, the founder of the IJ Sisters. And actually this chapel uh, belongs to the mother house of the IJ Sisters here in Singapore. And we've got a beautiful statue of Nicholas Barre. And I remember just celebrating the feast for the IJ Sisters and I learned something very important. You know what that was? What? Um, well, Nicholas Barry taught me that we have to totally abandon, that we have to be totally abandoned to the providence of God. That means when we do not have enough, we have to ask God for what we need. Totally abandon ourselves to God, trust God completely. And that's why our responsorial psalm says to call out to God our strength. That's right. Okay, you're very excited now, oh my gosh. Okay, so we are going to call out to God because we are poor, we are needy, and we trust in God's providence. And that's beautiful because then love will see beyond. And then we are, the love will be able to go and touch where love is lacking. And that's where God will put his love to the full. Amazing, right? Indeed. To end, I got a story to share. And I remember I've got a friend. Mm -hmm. um, she lost her very dear friend in a bicycle accident. And it was so sudden. There was so much pain and suffering because of the loss. And she started to paint to um, actually to get over her grief and her pain. Then what happened? Well, in one of her painting, she decided to draw two hearts. The small one, represents her own heart. The big one would represent God's. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, cool, isn't it? But do you know something more cool? As she started to paint and she finished the painting, you know what happened? What? Well, the small heart, which was supposed to be her heart, right? At the end of the painting, it was the same size as the other heart, God's heart. How come? I know. So she asked the same question, asking the Lord, why did she intend to draw one small, one big? And at the end, there was two uh, hearts of the same size. Mm -hmm. And then she heard a voice. What? What did she say? The voice said, you can love just like I do. You can love just like I love. That means, you know what, Francis? I know. We can love as God loves. Amen. And my dear friends, now responding to God's word, God's good news, let us profess our faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, to follow Jesus is to love with all our hearts. In union with his love, let us pray for the whole human family. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, our priests and clergy, that their lives and teachings give witness to a God who is compassionate and just to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they will have the wisdom and courage they need to guide their people safely through the coronavirus pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For humanitarian aid and relief organizations, the Church's various social service agencies, that they continue to receive the support they need to carry out their works of mercy to bring the Lord's healing touch, love, and comfort to the poor, the homeless, the abandoned, and the least of our sisters and brothers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrants, refugees, and asylum seekers, that they not be treated as strangers in our midst, but as friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children, that love will guide them as they grow. For our young people, that they find a joyful faith in their families and encouragement to respond to a life of ministry and service. And for the aged, that love will bring the crowning years to fulfillment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold silently in our hearts and those who have asked for our prayers. In union with Mary, the Mother of God and all the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, your love has brought all things into being. Open our hearts to welcome your love and share it without reserve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your Majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that, by sinning, we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
to him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Receiving the body and blood of Christ is about receiving the Holy Spirit, God himself also. And in our spiritual communion, at this time that we cannot receive the body and blood of Christ physically, we continue to be open. And in fact, we have to be even more open to the Holy Spirit working in our lives. That if we want to love God, 
love self, love neighbor, we really need the Holy Spirit to be with us. So in this time of quiet, we continue to allow the Lord to be in our hearts and to unite ourselves with Him totally. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
In Corinthians it says, There's one body, but it has many parts. But all its many parts make up one body. We are all part of one church, regardless of our parish, ministry, or the groups we are in. We are one. For we were all baptized by one spirit, clergy and laity, all co-responsible for the mission of the church. Like unleavened bread, we are all molded together by the same spirit to form one body. Like the many who came before us, each part called to a life of sacrifice. Each one of us is blessed with various gifts and talents to share freely, to reach out, love and support one another generously. Just like bread blessed and broken, our lives and the work of our hands are consecrated to be the living body of Christ. To be given and shared with all. To be a light to the world. We, His living body, are called to build strong evangelizing families to strengthen the fabric of the church. To raise a generation of young people passionately in love with Jesus. To continue to form the faith of generations and mold the future through Catholic education. We are to care for our elders and shepherds who have cared for us to grow and sustain our places of worship and infrastructures and to encounter Jesus, be in communion with one another and be his witnesses to the world. We are the living body of Christ. Each one of us is a part of it. Together as one, we reflect him. Let us each strive to be vibrant, evangelizing and missionary Christians in our families, with our friends and in our communities. Let us respond as one body of Christ. Be givers of our time, talent and treasures. Let us pray, act and give to build the church today for tomorrow.